recording. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. This is the weekly TSC call. Uh, it's a public meeting. Anybody is welcome to attend and uh, participate. There are two requirements to doing so, though. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed on the uh, Zoom client, if you have it. And the other part is the code of conduct, which basically says you need to behave in a decent manner, which, you know, for short, I say contribute in a positive manner. Of course, there's a lot more to it, but, you know, please make yourself uh, knowledgeable about those two things if you're not already. With that done, we can get moving with the agenda. There is first an announcement from Brian. Brian, what is this about? The floor is yours. I, what the, I don't know. Wait a minute. Who put this on the agenda? Uh, <laughs> I did at your request yesterday when we were okay. talking. Then it's, it's, uh, it wasn't meant to be a surprise. Uh, let me put a, a, um, a link in chat. Uh, we uh, um, have been playing around more with uh, LF analytics, um, uh, basically with uh, uh, analytics for uh, on the GitHub repos and on uh, uh, that apply to other sources of contributions um, into uh, kind of an aggregate picture uh, uh, through um, working with the LFIT team. Um, uh, and, uh, and so it's uh, and due to a lot of hard work on Rise part, um, uh, it's uh, become useful, uh, partly thanks to uh, him figuring out um, the affiliations uh, support that we have in terms of you know uh, who's, who is whose employer and, and, and history and that sort of thing. Um, but I think it's it's time for it's 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 ready for folks in the TSC to take a look at and think start thinking about we don't have to talk about it here but start thinking about how um, we might want to have it inform some of the conversations we have here uh, about project health and and our priorities for um, uh, you know what we want to see these projects become so I, I the there are things that are broken um, probably you know there are things that um, you know make it hard to compare apples to apples of course. Um, uh, and and lots more to to, to do, but uh, if you find bugs uh, or things that don't seem quite right, drop a note to uh, you know Rye or Dave or myself, um, and uh, uh, you know and start thinking about where and how we might want to apply this in our conversations. That's it. I think. That's All right. The, Thank you, was... Brian. <laughs> so, Rye, I understand you had. Uh your ways into this. Do you have anything to add so that people can easily find their ways into this and know what we are looking at? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're saying there. So, um, well, so, I mean, I, from what I understand, I mean, so uh, Brian talked about the affiliation aspect, for instance. Mm -hmm. I understand that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite a pain to do, but mm -hmm. you try to... Um, Disambiguate some of the anonymous names. I did. And figure out who they are. I did. And there are different categories, I think is worth pointing out. And right. by the way, people, I, I, I know one thing that it wasn't obvious to me is when you look at the dashboard, you see first all the ties with all different projects with some basic information. You have to actually, there's a link on the name of the project it's kind of weird because it's a very small area compared to the size of the tile. If you click on the tile, you get some other information. I think there was a pop-up or something, but you have to click on the actual name of the project to get to the, like a deeper dive into the information related to that particular project. And then it's a bit more obvious to navigate, but the first one I found is a bit, <laughs> it's kind of a hidden path, but, uh, and then, there are different categories in terms of affiliations, which was not obvious to me. And in particular, there is like unknown and undisclosed. I think it's worth some explanation, right? If you don't mind. No, no, it's fine. Uh, unknown means, well, that, that's your default state um, when you come into the system, you're unknown. Uh, undisclosed is something that I added for users that I spent some time on, couldn't figure out uh, who they were, and didn't want them to keep showing up in the unknown bucket. Um, and when you look at affiliations, uh, for a lot of this, when I was looking at someone's affiliation, whatever their link 
what if their email address made it obvious what an affiliation was, that was my guess, or I would look at their GitHub profile and see if they listed like something at the top as their employer, then I would go with that. Um, so a lot of this is uh, guesswork and I'm open to changing all of the affiliations. Um, one thing that I did uh, want to show you is that, uh, and as soon as I learn how to type over all this crap, So this is my personal affiliation uh, or identity management dashboard. And you see that I've used a couple email addresses. Um, and if you've used a couple email addresses, they can be merged in this way. And then your organizational affiliation is what it says. These are time bound. Um, so uh, if you start and stop um, your contributions for that time period will be associated with that affiliation. So Ryan, I think you need some more email addresses. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I think Seriously. maybe only Gary has more because he, he doesn't use his own real email. Well, <laughs> you know, I didn't realize that this was going to pick up every freaking commit I ever made. So, <laughs> uh, uh, and if you, see that you are in the wrong bucket, then let me know and I'll change your affiliation. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna cry. And if your email address or whatever you want listed differently, just let me know. Hey, something just occurred to me. Hot has been saying he's concerned by people cheating the system and voting multiple times. I'm wondering whether we're looking at a possible uh, criminal right here. <laughs> It could be. Um, you're right to be suspicious because I do, you know, both run the election and choose who gets to vote in the election. And um, <laughs> and you have many ways to vote, apparently. Well, yeah. So where is, where is our profile again? Uh, maybe you don't it have It says admin to. sign in. Is that what we well, use? I, I think, Chris, the problem is this was only for contributors. And so you probably don't have a profile. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Barry is on fire today. <laughs> Holy crap, Barry. Uh, you do have a profile, Chris. There you are. I do, I'm sure. Oh, oh now but look at how many email mean... addresses this has. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What the hell? Vote early, vote wow. early. Rye, I think you should quit your current job and start offering a forensics, getting into forensics. It's pretty good. It's my past life. I don't do that anymore. Thanks. Uh, how do Since you get in there? A few how do you how do you log into it? this? Uh, apparently, you can't. Um, <laughs> so we can't fix our own to nope. check to see what what's in it. Uh, this is uh, editing your own profile is coming. Your okay. ability to edit that's why I was saying, like if you go to the main page here, and we pick, uh, let's just go here and see or. Let's say, uh, da, 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 let's say last five years of Aries. Let's, let's pick another project like Fabric, which has you know, contributions for a much longer period. Get an extra F. Nope. Um, no, no, that was the percent two F. Yeah. yeah. So if we look here, um, I did go through and try to get the unknown contributions down to a single digit percent on every project. Unknown is down to 3%. Undisclosed is at 1%. Yeah. What is undisclosed and what is the difference between the two? Um, unknown is the default state. Undisclosed means that I spent time trying to figure out your affiliation and I wanted to mark it for myself so that I wouldn't spend any more time next time they came around. I wanted to pick the, the easy fruit because I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I see that BM has 305 commits. I suspect that's probably IBM. That's what I think whenever I see That's where really you have to go through the, the uh, profiles and make sure you <laughs> yeah. don't have a little cut and paste error there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is something else I wanted to show. It does show your, your Docker hubs, uh, your repos over there. Um, this confluence is something I'm working, working on disambiguating. This block will be the same for all projects. 
um, right now. So, um, so this is this corresponds to the wiki pages, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is this is like for the entire Hyperledger wiki. Okay. Um, it doesn't. I haven't yet gone to the work to split it up into spaces, although it does support it. That's new support, as in like the last week, and I was working on other stuff. So. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I wanted to see. Uh, anyway. If there's anything anyone wants to see here, just it's a good piece of work. Well, I only did the affiliation part. So <laughs> it's no, but uh, so so well, I, I mean, mean that must have been I mean, what do you got? Like six hundred people, something like that, seven hundred. Yeah. Something like you that. You had to go through and So I, I think this is, uh, you know, a nice piece of uh, information. I mean, all this information is actually readily available, but not in a digestible form, right? And so this puts all into some kind of neat uh, form for us to look at. The question is going to be for the TSE to figure out how to le leverage this information now, you know. Uh, as Brian says, hopefully we can use that to help products identify maybe areas where there could be some improvements. And, uh, you know, so that's the question. And, you know, for now, we don't need to go much deeper into this now. I think it, we've got a sense of what's there. It will take some time for everyone to do their own exploration on their own time. But I think it would be good if you could think about what you think we could do with this and we could discuss this on the next call or so and figure out, you know, some ways to use this in a productive way. I see you've also got the labs in there. That's good. Yeah. The data for the labs is uh, filling in. Um, it may not have be completely there yet. And I'm aware of a bug. I filed a ton of bugs on this. Um, you can't, it doesn't matter. Play around. Let me know what you find. Oh, but so another aspect. So where would we file a bug if we found one or if we thought we found one? Um, you could go to support. Um, there is a section for that. Is there? That's how I file my bugs. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I'm waiting for it to, uh, so you want to go to community bridge support and then CB insights. Where do you find the help center there? Uh, I don't see this in my view. Okay. Well, maybe because you, you have admin support. Where's your type support? Support at Linux foundation. I don't work. Did yeah. you try that? Oh, I'm sorry. Got it. Okay. So, Rai, besides playing around with this, and this looks great, by the way, what else can we, we as a TSC or individuals, do to help you right now? Uh, good question. Um, let me know what it is that you want in terms of. So, I know that. Uh, like, could this do the the stats for quarterly reports automatically, right? What are the features that you want? What are the features that you need? And um, I know I worked with uh, Dano yesterday to correct a bunch of affiliations. He gave me a big list of people. Um, so if you if you can give me a big list of people, that would be awesome. Uh, just let me know. And by the way, so this data is refreshed uh, how often on a daily basis or so? Uh, a little bit more frequently than once a day. It depends on the data source. For stuff that Linux Foundation owns, it's more frequent. For stuff that we don't, it's less frequent. Um, GitHub is about twice a day, um, depending. Um, you know, because you can only use the tokens so much, right? So. Yeah. Okay, but, any other questions? Anyone else?
All right, if none, then we're done with this. Thank you, Rai. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Let's move on then. Oh, well, let me ask first, is there any other announcements that's not on the agenda, but that people want to make? And Gary, I'm talking about serious announcements. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. There were a bunch of quarterly reports, actually Transact was already there last time, but I saw Chris put some comments and not everybody had reviewed it then. I think most of the reports have now been reviewed by most of the TSC members. And so I haven't seen anything that, that uh, requires some discussion now, but let me ask globally if there's anything that anyone wants to discuss now. I saw some comments and questions, but uh, it seems like they were answered. I don't know if people want to follow up on any of this now. Okay, I take it not. All right, so then we are good. I do want to highlight that we are missing now three reports from Borough, Aries, and Explorer. If uh, you're part of this uh, project, please look into submitting the report. That would be appreciated. And there is the link to the calendar for what's coming next. So with that done, there is one issue which I've tried very hard to get resolved offline and failed, I'm afraid, <laughs> which shows that, you know, we're not quite ready to live without these TSC calls apparently because even so, for something like this that I thought was pretty straightforward, we can't seem to be able to get to a conclusion in a reasonable amount of time at least. I'm not saying it could never happen, but uh, I thought this would be done in a week. And now we are like a few weeks in and it's still not uh, closed. And uh, I asked people to look into it, to comment and vote. And pretty much, you know, there were some comments, obviously, and the, the page shows that. But it doesn't look like we're close to uh, closure. So let me try now and see if we can make progress getting there. So the issue is pretty simple. Uh, the, when we set up the labs, uh, we said, well, you know, we were concerned by the possibility of, you know, the labs becoming a dumping ground for all sorts of projects that were not worth the resources we we're investing into, you know, having those labs, even though it's pretty minimal, it's still, you know, there's still some. And so we, put a requirement that the proposal should be supported by a sponsor. And the role of the sponsor was very loosely defined as saying, basically they're endorsing this and signaling that yes, they think this is worth you know, a lab. And so we defined which category of people could qualify, uh, would qualify as a sponsor and it's relatively limited to chairs of, uh, or to maintainers of a project or chairs of working groups. Spe specifically, we do not include SIG chairs. And um, I can tell you, I'm also a steward lab as well as a maintainer. And of course, oh, there's a member of TSC also. And then, um, so I qualify in it, but every possible ways. But, uh, you know, I end up, being tapped all the time. People come to me and try to get me to be their sponsor. And quite frankly, I mean, I feel like, yeah, well, sure, I can be the sponsor, but it doesn't seem necessarily that's the right thing to do. And especially when there are people like coming from a SIG who are trying to set up a lab and they're being told, sorry, your chair is not good enough. Uh, you need a sponsor that's qualified. Uh, it seems a bit silly. So, the proposal was simply first to say, hey, let's extend the sponsors to include SIG chairs. Then this led to a discussion. Among the discussion, the whole idea of why we had sponsors in the first place came up. And there is also lab stewards. And the lab stewards, in many ways, 
also play a, uh, an important role here in looking at the proposals, making sure all the information that's expected is there. And, you know, uh, and we, we typically have dialogues with the, the, the people are proposing the, the lab to make sure, you know, they understand what it takes and they have all their ducks in line and, uh, and so on. And I quite frankly, you know, so people have said, hey, at least there was a comment. I forget who it is now. I'm sorry. Um, do we even need sponsors anyway? So I'm, I have to admit, I, you know, I don't think we need them, but I was not against having them. I know some people felt better about having them. And so there's really, you know, the first step is to say, just add sick chairs. The extra step is just say, or the alternative is to say, no, forget the sponsors. We don't need sponsors. The steward labs can be entrusted with filtering out the weeds and uh, that's good enough. So that's kind of like the background for this issue. Uh, in my opinion, you know, I was trying to keep it super simple and say, let's just add six chairs to the list, be done. But I'm, you know, I'm happy to listen and entertain any discussion on that front if people rather have an alternative of just getting rid of sponsors. I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to that either, so. So, so my read of the comments that, yeah. is that um, most people want to continue sponsors. Okay. So let's start with this. You know, let's assume the status quo on why we have sponsors. It's, you know, the, the reason we had them is still valid and we are keeping them. And so the proposal is, you know, extend the list of sponsors to six chairs. If you're not in agreement with the proposal, I would like to hear what the you know rationale is. For for me, and I'm not saying which way I vote right now, but SIGs are not under CS TSC control or under our you know governance, if you will. So the question is, do we want that um, them to be able to come in and and do things? And I'm not saying which way I, I would go for. I think my comments sort of had some hints, but it's, you know, I, I just want to make sure we, you know, just don't go at it and then realize that we've stepped into something. And so let me ask you, I mean, why do you think that could be a problem? I just, you know, with a purist hat on, I just want to make sure people understand. Um, one thing I worry about related to that is, is the sponsor someone who understands the GitHub repositories, who understands kind of what the requirements are for kind of getting things up and running? Um, uh, the sponsorship role, uh, when people have asked me to sponsor, has not been so much a should we, shouldn't we kind of uh, decision process, but rather a have we done the right things to be able to get started, meaning is the code open? Have other organizations looked at it? Do they have a use case that they've clearly defined? You know, just kind of the, the basics, how do I explain this as a thing um, kind of steps, not so much a, a filtering step. All right. Anyone else? I mean, the, yeah, yeah, I, I think, would... you know, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Arno. Um, I, I would I would expect that uh, as a sponsor, right? The the sponsor is really helping that group of people through the process of contributing to open source, right? So it may be the first time that they contribute it. Um, they may not even know uh, how to use GitHub, which I've seen uh, even within uh, you know the community. We have people who are, have never used it before, and so it's the first time. And uh, we've actually even had discussions, I think, here around, you know, well, should we move to GitHub because not everybody can contribute via GitHub, blah, 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 whatever. So I think that sponsorship role is, is really about helping to build that lab uh, to, to something uh, that, you know, helps to build a community, helps to maybe eventually become a project, right? And so I wanna, um, I want to be sure that as we consider that sponsorship role, it's not just a, you know, 
a check mark or sign off, right? There is something behind um, the, the reason that we wanted sponsors in the first place. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm personally against this. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be the first brave one to say it on this call. Uh, I, I, I do think that, you know, uh, we moved the SIGs out from underneath the TSC for a reason, um, in, in that we didn't think they were technical in nature and they were focused on industry. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't people within the SIGs who could fill a role of sponsorship, but, uh, you know, we, we did specifically say that SIGs were not part of the TSC. So you did, what you're implying is, therefore, they should not be sponsors. Yeah, maybe it's specious logic, but yep, that's exactly it. <coughs> I also <laughs> would kind of like to add to that. It doesn't mean we couldn't add particular folks in the SIGs as sponsors. I just, it makes me nervous to make them automatically sponsors where some of them might not be involved on the code side at all. And to that end, I don't know if we really need to get that complicated about things. I'm in agreement with with what I've heard so far and I and more or less commented similarly in the thread that you know this is an opportunity for winning support for your project for getting mentorship um, and I don't think we have to get real complicated with with criteria it's the easier we keep things for people the better all right thank you for those who have spoken anyone else Arno, this is uh, Dave Hughesby. I just wanted to point out that some of our labs are not um, entirely focused on code. So there's a new lab for this summer to develop a community, sorry, a, a university course based on Hyperledger Fabric using Hyperledger Umbra as the simulation environment. And uh, so that lab is going to be educational material. There will be some code examples and labs and things like that, but it's not, its primary goal is not to write code, it's to develop a, the, the curriculum and, and the course material for a university course. So, I mean, if, if it's the technical versus non-technical aspect of SIGs that matters, just pointing out that not all labs are focused on developing code. But I, I remember the discussion of like white papers and where those are created. I don't mean to dig that, that body up, but uh, you know, those are a non-technical example of a work product as well. So <clears throat> I'm curious why we think we need to extend it. I mean, we have what, 11 and I think we're gonna grow to 14 or something this year. TSC members, then not enough people to reach out to and say, hey, do you support this? Well, it's also the 40 or so maintainers. Maybe we're up to 50 maintainers. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are tons of people that you can reach out to. I don't know why we have to extend it necessarily. So, that's so, a good point. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, hi, it's Marta. Uh, one thing that I would recommend, having worked with some of the uh, people that wanted to submit labs, is making it uh, the list of who can be in sponsor with some contact details much more clear and visible. Um, because at least with people that I've been talking to, they come to me and say, well, we don't know these people, we don't know how to contact them, so what do we do? Can you find someone for us? So. I'm happy to do it, obviously, but probably having a clear list with contact details of whatever people prefer, to, however people prefer to be contacted, would be a great addition. That's a very good point, Marta. I agree with you. That might actually help. And you know, I wanted to give a little bit more background. Is you know, as a steward, I get pinged all the time because. People make proposals. They have a bogus sponsor, meaning somebody who doesn't qualify. All right, and uh, per the, the two days rule. And so we tell them, sorry, your sponsor is not qualified. They say, who can be? And then, you know, as soon as you read, <laughs> they say, oh, could you please be my sponsor? And so we got hit by that all the time. And, you know, it's no surprise. You see Tracy posted who has been sponsoring, you know, 
the people who sponsored the most is myself and uh, Vipin, and we are both stewards. It's not by accident that we also have the most uh, labs that we sponsor because we get asked all the time. And it's very, uh, honestly, you know, I look at the proposal, I'm like, yeah, it makes perfect sense. And it's hard to say, yeah, but you know, I don't want to be sponsored every lab that gets proposed. So why don't you go look for somebody else and then they get a bit of a uh, goose uh, chase. And so that's why I think Marta's point is very relevant. And if we did say, hey, sorry, I don't want to be the sponsor, but please consult this list, that might make it a bit easier, both for them to find one other person and for me, for one, to say, no, thank you. <laughs> Turning this around, maybe a different way of phrasing it is, if anyone on the TSC is looking for opportunities to help uh, mentor new contributors or, or you know, help, ex help grow the Hyperledger community, um, if you're not already serving as like a mentor on, a, on one of the mentorship programs we have, um, uh, this is, I think, uh, uh, high impact, because I don't think it's, it'd be that hard to be a steward of a lab you know uh, most of them are not not super busy but it's a great way to pass on um wisdom about how to participate in an open source project and how to be part of hyperledger so so i realize i sort of started this discussion um like to sort of flip it on its head for a second we're, we're still talking about governance from a steering perspective I mean, personally, I'd like to see more involvement and, and maybe it's just the role I'm in. I don't see a lot of involvement between the SIGs and the projects and things like that. Um, and maybe it's there and I'm just not seeing it. But this would be an opportunity for, you know, SIGs and projects and, and, and the more quote unquote technical side to work closer together and make a better community versus us versus them. Um, so I, I think from a steering perspective, where do we want to be in a year? Do we want to work more closely with SIGs? Do we want them to be off on their own? And if I'm wrong about the collaboration or lack of it, feel free to correct me. So, so Mark, um, I think you're you're hitting on something, and I think the the question is, are we suggesting because the, these projects that come in with SIG chair sponsors are projects that the SIGs want to do, right? Normally, um, so you know, I guess the, the one of the comments I think that Dan made earlier was this this idea of if the SIGs have to go to a maintainer of a project or a TSC that in and of itself will bring that SIG closer to potentially that project or that TSC member. Um, so so I, I, I'm not sure how to, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but I also think that there's, there's multiple ways maybe of achieving what it is that um, you're suggesting, unless I'm misunderstanding your direction. Um, so my understanding of what you were trying to say was that we should allow SIG chairs to be sponsors. And so I guess I'm, I'm saying that if we don't allow SIG chairs to be sponsors, then it opens up the possibility of those SIGs becoming closer to the projects in the TSC. Well, I think, well, I guess my point was more you know, we, we shouldn't look at it as a straight governance thing. We should look at it from a steering perspective. Personally, I'd like to see us work closer with SIGs. If we allow them to just sponsor projects, I mean labs, excuse me, then um, I think we'd miss out on that opportunity. Ah, okay. So we're on the same page. Yeah, labs, labs yeah. get created. There's no real reporting on labs. Mm -hmm. So labs can get created every day and as a TSC, I don't know that we know unless we were one of the sponsors or a lab steward. Yeah. Right. Right. I'd actually, as a side note, like <clears throat> labs do quarterly reports. Not every lab, but like the lab stewards who are already overworked, but just say, <laughs> this quarter we had six new ones or whatever. So, <clears throat> I mean, I think Mark, you're 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 pointing out some, and, and again, we've had this 
discussion about should the SIGs be underneath the TSC? Should they be closer aligned with the technical side of things rather than the board? As far as I know, only the board gets those reports from the SIG. So <clears throat> who knows what's going on over there um, in, in SIG land, so to speak. Um, it would be good to have the SIGs be more closely affiliated and affinity you know, or, or aligned, I should say, with um, what's going on in the various projects or labs. Um, <clears throat> and for us to know a little bit more about what they're thinking, you know, are they developing requirements? I've never seen, in all my days, I've never seen anybody from a SIG say, hey, you guys in Fabric should build X or add this new feature or whatever. Never happened. Um, but that's not why they're there. It, it, you know, explicitly, they're not there to um, create new requirements for other people to go build stuff. That's that's kind of an anti-pattern in open source anyways. Um, the, all their meetings are public. Um, um, most of them are recorded and posted. Um, usually, you, you know, it's these are these are talk shops, right? These are places where people who want to talk about the application in healthcare and or in a um, uh, in education or other things gather to, to listen to presentations and, and sometimes they go off and form subgroups to, to on, on specific themes and then and then occasionally you know they say let's work on some code and that's when you know we as staff direct them into a properly TSC overseen process of you know being a part of the labs um, and and that's why I, I I, I would tend to lean towards uh, still having the strong connection with the TSC um, uh, uh, by having a steward uh, for any of those labs. You know, it has to be somebody who's part of the the, the um, a TSC association, right? You know, including the the maintainers and those sorts of things um, to keep that that very tight. Um, but you all are also completely welcome to come over to the SIGs uh, and and participate in the meetings. Um, uh, and 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 look for opportunities for that kind of thing too, um, for for you know where where there might be new requirements. But usually they're more at the application tier. Frankly, they're usually not at the you know not having conversations about what does the infrastructure need to do or change, because uh, there's still a lot of big topics and, and open questions about how do you apply this to health records, for example. Um, so um, part of this. Hold on. Can I just add one thing to correct the, the, the request about reports? The board does get a monthly summary. Um, the all SIG chairs and their team and their participants will be uh, used to do quarterly reports. They asked us to do biannual because they just it was a lot of work. So the next one is due July 15th or in or around July 15th. So I encourage the TSCs will post it onto the TSC as they get posted. And I just encourage you to read about all the, the good work that the the SIGs are doing, and and as Brian said, sh you know, c c you know, work with us or go directly to the chairs if you want to participate or you need something very specifically. We've tried to make connections to the performance and scale working group, etc. Just please let us know how we can facilitate those discuss those discussions. Yeah, that was pretty much my point, Daniela. Those those reports do exist, um, and I wanted to point out. <clears throat> I'm showing the CM SIG page right on GitHub. For those of you on Zoom, um, this was a place that the capital markets requested to be able to, to work on stuff. So not everything has to be a lab. And uh, <clears throat> some time ago, Bippin requested the uh, ID working group also have a place to work in GitHub. And so this was uh, created for that. And you see that Bippin's doing some work here. So not everything has to be a lab, um, but you know, there, there are there are other ways, and I see that David has his hand up, so I'll be quiet. Yeah, I was going to ask them about that. Dave, is that because you want to talk, or is that all over? Or for Sorry, that was that was old. Um, okay, I'm lowering all my right. hand now. That was just about the the labs being, you know, some of them are non technical in nature. Okay, so I've heard quite a bit of negative, uh, <laughs> you know, reaction to the proposal. Does anybody support it? But I don't know, as I, as I, this is Angelo. As I said there, I support this for a very simple reason. I think we have to make ideas flowing as much as possible. The, uh, and uh, I, don't get, I don't get really the point that we need technical people to judge ideas. Uh, 
uh, I mean, if an idea has a value, uh, we, we should not uh, the, you should we should not judge who is proposing this idea if it's technical, or not technical, or what's the background. If 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 an idea makes sense, makes sense. It doesn't. This is the most rational argument. So. Uh, to me, this seems going this direction to expand the possibility to have ideas flowing. So that's for me, it's very, it's very fun. There are, I mean, in the comments actually, I've also read other, uh, other ways to improve this flowing of idea. That's, uh, we should apply all of this. I mean, we have to, the goal, uh, my person, from my point of view, the goal should be, let's have more people speak uh, to propose things and see and evaluate, discuss. And that's, uh, that should be the goal, not to say, oh, no, no, we, we have uh, this uh, only technical people. And sometimes, you know, technical people also get spring, uh, things very wrong. All right, thank you, Angelo. Anyone else wants to speak in support of the proposal? So it sounds like there's only Angelo and myself at this point. So if that's all there is that uh, I think we can kill this officially. Okay, at the same time, I just want to reiterate, it is a really good way for, for anybody on the technical side of the community to help us grow the Hyperledger community, uh, is to help be a, a steward for a lab. Uh, and uh, maybe there's a way we send a call out to the maintainers list or, or some, uh, you know, on Rocket Chat, that sort of thing for, for more, more help on that front. So can we do what Marta said, which was provide like a yes. list of people who are yes. willing to, uh, to consider sponsoring labs. And I posted this in the TSC chat, but I think it would be also very useful if we listed people by area. Like, you know, maybe if you're submitting a fabric based lab, you probably, you know, pick Gary as your sponsor, not Dan Middleton or something like that, right? Um, well, Gary could be applied to any lab, really. Well, clearly, but, you know, uh, it goes the without first saying. Stop. That's maybe all we need is that to say, if you don't know who to ask, just ask Gary. That's fine with me. No, but more seriously, I, I, I fear we're going to talk about building a list which inherently is dynamic and changing all the time, especially, you know, TSC changes once a year, but the maintainers change much more uh, often. And so I think we need to have a kind of a meta list that says, you know, the, the, the sponsors, you know, uh, the TSC members with a link to TSC, and then, you know, the different projects maintainers, and we put the links to the projects, and we let people go look for the maintainers file to look for the people. But, I, and I don't want to start yet another project, which <laughs> will end up on Rise Lab about, you know, creating some script that will gather all this data and put it in a nicely you know, format in one page. We can let people follow the links. I was thinking of more a volunteer thing where you just put up a page and if people are interested, then, you know, they want to help, they can just put up their name. Because a lot of it is just whether people will respond to email or not. And if you have someone that's volunteered, then they might be more inclined to, to like respond to an email about this rather than people just sort of, you know, cold emailing maintainers. All right, that's an interesting idea. How do people feel about that? Are we going to end up with an empty list or are people going to volunteer? Well, I'll volunteer. It, is it a list of people from the groups that are already eligible to be? Yes, of course it has yes. to be, you know, if you're one of the qualified sponsor, you know, you can go put your name there to signal to, you know, uh, labs or lab proposals that you're in, you're volunteering to be a, a sponsor. And we should all put Gary's cell phone number as our contact info. <laughs> well, you can still decline on a, on a case by case basis, obviously, but it's just you know a way to signal that you're you're open to it. I think this this is an interesting idea. Happy to do that if that. People feel like that would go well. So I just don't I, want to have at least with three P names and that's it because then it's like. Okay, I, I propose I will stick something together here in the lab space, which will be much like the TSC decision log so that people can tag themselves as 
I will, I'm willing to entertain sponsoring your lab and we can just point people at a page and say, you know, here's Chris, he's an expert in documentation and here's Arno, he's an expert in surfing, right? And stuff like that. And you, you get to select, right? You self-select what you represent as your attributes there. So. All right, let's I'll, go with that. So we can't, so we can't add Gary because he's not an expert in anything? <laughs> Oh, um, I like it. He, that, Dave Husby, now you're playing the game. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, Gary is an expert at the very subtle digs. So, anyway. All right. Anything else on this topic? Um, I think we've I mean, killed it. No. Uh, something a little bit to the side, I guess. Um, I did think that having like a community list maintained in the lab space so people can easily find sponsors is one, but we've also been having a little bit more time on the TSC calls. So I was thinking, would it be a good place for whether this is like labs projects who want to present, who are already a labs project or people who are looking for sponsors who want to present, maybe we can start using some of our time and give it out to other things because this would also be an easy way to also know what's happening in labs if we give them the chance to just speak. Um, that was like one of the other ideas that I thought could make uh, sponsorship a little bit easier. Interesting idea. I, I, my, my concern is that, you know, it's a slippery slope. The whole concept of the labs was, you know, the TSC doesn't have to get involved and labs can be created with that TSC involvement, but. I, mean, I think there are also wide degrees of labs. There are people that are just happy to sort of post in labs and leave something there. And there are labs that sort of want to, to go through the, the full project life cycle and having some TSC, you know, eyes on, you know, labs that want to become projects might not be a bad thing. Kind of like Swayth's idea, we could we could try time boxing it. So you know maybe it's the the first meeting of every month. There's ten minutes at the end for people to do a lightning pitch. All right. I I do think it's interesting. I, I didn't mean to sound negative. I just want to. Uh, I, just well, I very much be, appreciate you not burning time for all of us. So yeah. <laughs> so Arno, I know our previous discussion was we're going to wrap this meeting up early, and it's such a light agenda, and we'll have. I, like, <laughs> I just wanted to poke you in the ribs a little bit. I you know I I want to close now, so that's what I'm trying to get to. So I appreciate that. Just did Arno, before you say you want to close now, don't ask the question. Does anybody have anything else to say before I close? Just say well, we're Do you have anything else? <laughs> you just not a, a value. Not, 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 not a value. That's why you shouldn't ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> These are good conversations to have as a community, though. Thank you, Arno, for making this space for them. All right. With that being said, I think we can close the call on this. We have closed the issue that was on the agenda, so I feel like we're making progress and this was time well spent. Plus, we had, uh, we've had we been entertained by Gary's humor, so that's all good. Do we need that close so it's in the decision log, or do we just wanna? I already updated all that. It is, Okay. it is. The issue is closed, it's been rejected. The proposal was rejected. All right, thank you. You All right. Good job, Ryan. You deserve a raise. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Be sure to tell Brian. Ryan. <laughs> raise for Ryan. Raise for Ryan. Yeah. All right. Meeting is closed. Thank you very much all for joining. Talk to you.